Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into exploration at the college level. My guest today is Jennifer Lenahan Cleary, and she is the Director of Career Exploration in Initiative School of Arts and Science, Rutgers University. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. So uh, usually I start my guests so where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? Well, right here at Rutgers, Rutgers, New Brunswick. Um, yes, it was the, I, that was my undergrad, Livingston College, now uh, considered the School of Arts and Sciences. So uh, let's just go back a little in high school. Um, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year in high school, senior year? When did it all begin for you? I, mean, I, I think freshman year, I, I think I had always assumed that I would go to college. Um, you know, it was something that I that I wanted to do. I I was a good student. I I enjoyed studying. Um, so, and in fact, when I prioritized what I wanted in a college, it was skiing and an immersive language dormitory. Right. So, <laughs> um, so so I was excited. My parents, on the other hand, prioritized cost. <laughs> And you know, comprehensive, good quality, and um, and so um, they they won out a little bit. My initial choice was Middlebury College in Vermont, um, but that was really it was just above our price range. And when I looked at Rutgers, I mean, Rutgers had um, an amazing honors program, um, which is ultimately what drew me in, um, drew my father in as well, and you know, and and really just the the overall value um, in terms of what you get. Now, uh, so you're at Rutgers University. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the school. What do you think of it? Sure. I, I mean, Rutgers is funny because especially back in the 80s when I went, um, in the early 90s, um, you know, Rutgers is known as, you know, it, it's the hometown school. It's, um, you know, it, it's, it's the school in your backyard. So as a result, it's the school nobody wants to go to, right? But I think my, my experience is also typical in that once I came to Rutgers, I was absolutely blown away. I realized how much I'd really underestimated it, right? Um, because it, it really is a place where you can study anything <laughs> you'd like. I mean, you will find somebody, and not only will you find somebody, you'll likely find an expert, right? Someone who's world renowned in that subject. Um, you know, as well as all of the, the social aspects of it and the different clubs and, 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 you know, they say that you can't make a small school bigger, but you can make a big school smaller. Sure. And that's how Rutgers felt to me. I kept finding these great small communities, um, you know, throughout the institution and that's great. That's my experience. So, so, um, how does one graduate from Rutgers University and become the director of uh, ca career exploration there? <laughs> well, first of all, you do have to study. Um, I, I recently actually ran into one of the first professors I had had at college. And the first paper I had to write for college, I started at 9 p.m. the night before. His comment on my paper was, this looks like you started this paper at 9 p.m. the night before. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get the time right. Um, but but I, I, I was called out and it was a very quick wake up call that this is different. This is not the same as high school. I had done well in high school. I thought I was a good student, but Rutgers requires work <laughs> and dedication. <laughs> um, you know, so, uh, but, but it's also a lot of fun. And, um, you know, so I, I had a lot of uh, support from friends, professors, et cetera. And I, I think the key to really getting through is to, to build that base of support, um, to, to get out, um, you know, whether it be virtually or in person when we're allowed to, um, to connect with professors and peers and, um, you know, and, and check out all of the variety of programs and things that Rutgers has to offer. Um, you know, so that, that's kind of how I got through. Now, how did I get through and then get to this place? Um, so, you know, I stayed in my lane. I, I didn't, you know, 
I didn't know anything about the world of work when I was in college. In fact, I did everything I could to avoid knowing about the world of work. My roommate was going to career services. She had a resume in order. She was going on interviews. And I wanted to dream that I would just be a professor. I would get my doctorate in something and it'll all work out. And I just wanted to study, right? Um, so I studied psychology and I decided in my senior year that I didn't want to go directly to graduate school. I thought maybe it's wiser if I actually go out there and experience this world of work first and <laughs> see what some of my other options might be. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, but in doing that, I, I didn't even have a concept that I could get out of my lane. So I studied psychology, I looked within that lane and I ended up moving into uh, human services. I worked with people with disabilities. Um, I ended up running a shelter for homeless families uh, for a while. And, um, you know, and, and that was the first 10 years of my career. And then I had a crisis, right? I, I started to realize that as much as I loved the work that I was doing, um, it was very emotionally taxing and it was time for a change. Um, and so that was the first time I think I, I had really sat back and did some self-reflection um, and thought out of the box, really thought about, well, what can I do and what's out there that looks interesting to me? And how can I really you know, find those common points of intersection? Um, and so I started looking at um, a whole variety of jobs. And I did consider law school as well, um, but decided against that. And I ended up taking a job at Robert Wood Johnson uh, University Hospital, actually in fundraising. Um, had never done that before, but it, it, um, it gave me the opportunity to, to run events and to get my feet wet in a whole new industry and to just get familiar with this concept that my arts and sciences degree was useful for lots of different things, right? That just because I studied psychology didn't mean that I had to stay in that psychology lane for my whole career. Um, you know, from there, um, you know, I found some things I enjoyed and didn't enjoy and an opportunity came up through networking uh, for a research job at Rutgers, uh, the Heldrich Center for Workforce Development. And that's how I got my feet wet with really understanding the economy, um, what's growing, what's shrinking, how do people navigate around, how do people move from college to career. Um, you know, and after 15 years of that, which was which was great, really interesting work, I thought, you know, I've got to get back to the people here. I've got I just spent 15 years in in research writing these tomes, these reports that three policymakers probably read. <laughs> Um, but, but I needed to get some of this information back out to students and to parents, um, you know, about, about how that transition happens in the real world um, for people. Wow. So, so how long have you been in the position? So I've been in this position for about four years. Um, you know, so I started in uh, 2016 and um, began to build the curriculum um, for the, the course that I run now. Um, we're doing a career explorations course. Wow. So um, that's my next question is actually, what is the career exploration? Uh, what, what is it all about? How does it work? Right. So, so um, back when I was in research, when I was at the Heldrich Center, um, we started this pilot program with um, the woman who is, is currently my, my boss now. Uh, she's the Vice Dean for Undergraduate Education at the School of Arts and Sciences, which is the largest school at Rutgers, New Brunswick. And um, she was very interested in this idea of helping uh, our students make that transition from college to work. And so back probably 12 years ago, um, she and I and the then head of career services partnered to pilot a course um, where we took some of this information that we had from research on, you know, how people actually move in their careers, what jobs are shrinking and growing, took some of her knowledge about, you know, the, the, the value of the arts and sciences for life and for work and, um, you know, as well as for academic growth. Um, and then some of the tools and tips and tricks from the career services office. And it was actually quite a successful pilot. We had some initial support, but there just wasn't funding to continue it at the time. Um, 
fast forward, uh, a donor, um, a, a wonderful man named Bruce Kurzik, who is actually a graduate of Rutgers. Um, he came forward and was very interested in supporting something just like this. So position got created. I saw it and I said, hmm, that sounds a lot like <laughs> what uh, uh, Vice Dean Lawrence and I had worked on several years ago. And um, so, uh, so I applied for the job and we were off to the races. Um, so we really, we rebooted uh, that idea, but in the interim, there were all of these new things happening around the country. You had Stanford came out with its Designing Your Life course. Yale has a very popular course, course called the Happiness course, the most popular course they've ever delivered. Um, actually, I don't think it's called that, but it's, it's essentially focused on um, happiness, right? How to, how to pursue that in your life. Um, and you had Bates coming out with purposeful work. Um, but we realized, you know, while all of these Ivy League institutions, they're focusing on this knowledge that students need um, to really leverage their arts and sciences education to be useful for their academic life, their life life, and their work life. Um, but what our students need in addition to that are some tools and connections. Right, um, so they need the knowledge, but they also need those alumni connections, business connections, and some training to, to do that well, right? If you've never, if you're a first generation college student, you've maybe not been exposed to certain aspects of the business world, um, to the whole concept of networking and how it's done, um, you know. And so we started building um, not just a course, but also events with alumni and really focusing on younger, more recent alumni, um, people who students could really relate to um, and say, you know, hmm, I can see myself getting to that point. And we also started doing something a little bit different. Um, you know, often when you have alumni events, they do bring in the superstars and and the whole narrative is about, hey, this is how I became super successful, <laughs> right? But a student who's a sophomore, who's struggling through classes, who's wondering, what am I gonna do with my life, tends to find those stories not very relatable. Um, so we started to focus more on, on um, bringing in people whose careers weren't fully baked yet, right? They're still working it out. Um, they're still facing challenges, or maybe they just recently overcame an important challenge, right? And, we've ha and we have them talk about those challenges. Um, and, and that we found is just really powerful for students. And so in addition to the course, you know, where we have students focusing on um, you know, understanding their, their interests, their strengths, their core values, what's important to them, um, you know, and, and really getting um, a method to explore careers and reflect on their findings in a way that gives them some direction that's flexible. Um, you know, we're, um, you know, we're, we're focusing on those things, but we're, we're also then building, building in these additional components so that they can take that knowledge and actually bring it into the world, form connections with businesses and alumni. And, you know, and, and when they do, that's when the light bulbs go off. That's when we see the stuff they've done in class, like, wow, now, now they get it. So, so how, how do you pick the businesses to, to find? How do, you, how do you figure out, do you know just over the years who, who graduates where and then you just go with how many people will want to go into that particular field and then just bring those type of people into the class right well that's been an interesting journey so um i've been focused mo more on um, alumni um and so we've done it a, a few different ways um last just this past fall we did a few events that were focused on majors and what we looked at, say, for political science is, you know, well, we know that there are a couple of jobs that are related to political science everybody wants to know about, right? Well, how do I get from political science to law or policy? Um, so we featured folks with those backgrounds, but then we also brought in some people who were doing some non-intuitive things, right? So they were maybe a business analyst um, or, you know, a writer or something, something like that. And then they could talk about 
um, how they connected um, what they learned in political science to this new area. Um, so we, you know, we're trying to sort of get panels and groups together that show the diversity of things that you can do with various degrees. Um, and also, you know, a diversity of people and perspectives and backgrounds. So is this a class that everyone at Rutgers takes uh, just to see what's out there? Um, no, I, to be perfectly honest, the only class, there is only one class at Rutgers that everyone is required to take, and that's expository writing. <laughs> right. Um, but what we are trying to do is bring this content closer to where students are, bring it into the curriculum. Um, when I talk with alumni, parents, you know, where, where were you all my life? Um, this didn't exist when I was an undergraduate, right? I had to go across town to career services um, and figure out these things on my own. Um, but we know that at least half of students never make it over there. Um, but these days with economic inequality growing, that's not acceptable, right? We've got to bring this to them. So we are, um, you know, it's, it's a course that is heavily promoted through the academic advising and career services offices. Um, we, I also work with the undergraduate directors um, of all the different majors in arts and sciences to make them aware of it. So we're really trying to promote it a lot to students and we have multiple sections and it really is increasing a lot in popularity. So we serve about 350 to 400 students a semester now and growing. And our hope is to build um, more curriculum so that in every year of school, you have a one credit class that will really help orient you in terms of what you should be doing during that year to really help make sure that you thrive after college. So, so what's entailed in the class? Is it just the variety of different um, uh, jobs that are out there? No, no, we're really trying to build, um, like I said, sort of the knowledge, the, the connections and um, skills, experiences that students need. So um, we start off with discovering yourself. Um, so, so a variety of self-assessments and tools um, to identify strengths and values and um, et, et cetera. Um, we get them to really start um, practicing some initial resume development, reflecting on your courses, um, projects, um, clubs, volunteer experiences, and beginning to translate and pull out of those um, what we call star stories, right? There's situation, task, action, results. Um, so it's really just a way of talking about what you do um, that's convincing to employers and your parents, <laughs> right? Do you find, do you find uh, uh, different students uh, that have different uh, backgrounds do better than others? Like, you know, let's say a, a student athlete takes the class compared to a scientist that takes the class, compared to a history major that takes the class? Do you find, do you find- That's an interesting question. Ironically, this is not going to be what most students and parents I think would guess, but it's the English majors, the language majors, it's the humanities. Because if you think about it, think about how much storytelling is involved in a successful job search. At every step of the way, you are being asked to tell an evidence-based story about yourself that is unique, right? That is well-crafted and evidence-based. And in what majors are you trained to do that very well? Right? Um, also, when you look at languages, um, linguistics, you know, foreign languages, et cetera, um, you're constantly looking for underlying structure in words. And, and you're looking for how those translate and move over um, into new domains. Um, that's a big part of the skill that students need to develop in order to move from a major into a career because they need to look at what they're doing in college that's similar to what's required of them out in the workplace. Um, and students who are taught to do that, to do translation, to look for underlying patterns that are similar but not the same, 
um, in different places, right, are just primed to do this well. Um, and it's actually the students who, um, who think that the game of college is just to acquire some job skills and then move into a particular job, right? And they're focusing a little less on those deeper analytical skills. They tend to have a harder time. Um, and also students who are not as focused on their writing skills have a harder time. Now, do you find students at Rutgers taking the class as a junior or senior, or do you, do you find freshmen yeah. and sophomores tend to take the class? Well, it's funny because we're, we created it for sophomores because we want to get this information to them early so they have time to organize themselves. Um, you know, because career management is a long term game. It's not a short term game. Um, but we have had a lot of pressure to offer it to seniors because, I, um, you know, they're desperate for it. And so we have sections of seniors and it's, it's amazing. You know, this is brand new information for many of them. Um, you know, and, and there are a lot of them are thinking, boy, I wish I had this in sophomore year. <laughs> yeah, so, so the tendency is they, they take it late basically because, um, they think they're graduating, so they need it now as a senior right. compared to starting early. I've I've had I've had so many people on the show, and they all they all say basically the same thing: start as early as possible, looking for colleges and so on and so forth. And mm -hmm. you're saying basically the same thing uh, when you're in college: start looking for the jobs earlier, so then by the time you become a senior, you have something. Right, right. And, you know, it's don't wait until you graduate to do the thing you want to do after college. You know, that's the advice, you know, that every successful graduate, <laughs> um, you know, I, I've talked to has, has had to say. Um, so that, yeah, getting started early is important. It also makes it less painful. I think students resist getting started early because they don't feel ready. Um, and they think, well, somehow when I'm ready, that you know, then, then I'll get into it. But you get ready by getting involved. Um, and you know, getting involved in a class like this really helps you to do it with support. With you know, you're you're in the same boat with your peers. Everybody's going through the same thing, so you help each other through it. So now, um, you you said that there's a lot of networking that gets involved in the class as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you find a lot of students end up finding jobs um, after the class? Um, so anecdotally, yes. Um, we haven't you know, done a full-blown study of that, but let me give you an anecdote. So um, we require students to go to at least one networking event per semester, and many resist this like you would not believe. <laughs> uh, you would think it was torture. <laughs> um, and one of the big criticisms they have is I don't want to waste my time, right? What if I'm not interested in that company or that person? Um, and so I had a student who she put off the assignment, it had to get done. Um, so I was strategizing with her on what was left to do. So she went to a sales, um, it was a, an information session with an employer um, about sales. She had no interest in sales, but she went there. She was the only student who showed up she got into a great discussion with the employer and the employer um, told her that he started off in the company in sales, but used that internship to move into HR, which is what she wanted to do with know. HR. And he offered her an internship on the spot in sales and talked to her for about an hour about how she can leverage that to get into a position in HR. And, you know, so she was ecstatic, right? And it was just something that uh, yeah. Do she did. Like a lot of students doing that. Um, yes, there. You know, those types of stories are um, are fairly common. Um, you know, where they're when they put themselves out there, when they take the risk to go to these events. Um, you know, they're they're making important connections that lead to opportunities, advice that leads to opportunities. Um, you know. Now, uh, do, you, do you find a lot of students looking for uh, just plain old advice on what, what the future holds? 
Yes, there's definitely a lot of that. I mean, especially nowadays, right? And we have had to really radically adjust the course, right? Because how you go about finding a job and what you need to consider in the era of COVID and, you know, economic chaos, for lack of a better word, is different than what we had before. Um, I mean, before COVID, we had a, a booming economy where many students coming in were thinking my biggest problem is just figuring out what I want to do because there's so much out there that I've got, I've got, you know, a lot to choose from. And everybody was very focused on what are the jobs that are growing and that somehow provided certainty. Um, now, we don't know what's growing and what's shrinking with very much certainty. Um, you know, it requires a much closer look on the ground um, to what's going on. It requires being more flexible and being more open to opportunities. We're coming to the end of our show. And uh, usually I ask my guests, um, what advice do you want to give to the parents and the students that are looking into a class like this? Uh, what advice do you want to give them? I want to give them the advice to um, to stay open and to, to, to relax a little bit, because especially when it comes to considering study in the arts and sciences, right, that English major, that history major, there was a lot of nervousness among parents before the pandemic about, you know, how that would work out for their child. Um, and I, I think through the work on this course, we found that A, we know that many of those students end up just fine. There's lots and lots of statistics that we share about how English majors outpace engineers in, in terms of their wages over time, right? Um, but, but beyond that, today in arts and sciences education is so much more important than ever you know, than ever before. Um, we need it for all of those traditional reasons, right? To, to be able to, to learn how to assess evidence effectively, to communicate effectively, to solve the very large and very real problems that we have throughout our, our world right now. Um, and those majors build important skills that are increasingly valued, emotional intelligence, writing, the, the ability to be creative, to adapt, right? As artificial intelligence um, you know, takes over more and more, we're going to need people who are comfortable switching, changing gears. And, you know, and it's those arts and sciences majors um, when, when students really embrace them and embrace the deep thinking within them. Um, it sets them up for success academically as well as in life and in their careers. Well, Jennifer, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you. It was wonderful talking with you. Thanks for the opportunity. Yep. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.